Welcome back to our Salvation Equation series. This is part three entitled Repentance for Forgiveness of Sins. Just before leaving earth, Jesus gave his disciples instructions on exactly what he wanted them to go into all the world and preach. He said repentance for forgiveness of sins should be preached in my name among all nations. Well, how about that? Do you remember the two terms in the salvation equation? Well, there they are. Repentance is our part, or term A in the salvation equation, and forgiveness of sins is available through Christ's death, which is God's part, or term B in the salvation equation. So in essence, Jesus was telling his disciples, I want you to go and preach the two terms in the salvation equation, which added together lead to eternal life. So let's talk a little more about this word repent. It was translated from the Greek word metaneo, which means to repent, to change any or all of the elements composing one's life, attitudes, thoughts, and behaviors concerning the demands of God for right living. <laughs> well, friend, the demands of God for right living are the Ten Love Commandments. So to repent means to willfully change from disobeying the Ten Love Commandments to obeying them. It's that simple. So if you're disobeying them, then stop, turn, and start living your life in accordance with them. That is repentance. And Jesus wants us to preach that if men would repent, then they will receive forgiveness for their sins through his death, and ultimately eternal life. That is what repentance for forgiveness of sins means. It's just the salvation equation. The Apostle Peter got it. For just a few weeks after Christ's ascension, he was preaching, Repent and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. By the way, notice when your sins will be blotted out, or officially forgiven. It's when Christ returns, when the times of refreshing shall come, but for now, your job is to live a repentant lifestyle, daily walking the way of God's Ten Love Commandments. Do that, and you will receive forgiveness for your sins one day, just as the salvation equation reveals. Well, the Bible is full of verses about repentance, so keep an eye out for them. And just realize they are all expressing term A in the salvation equation, or our duty in obtaining eternal life. John the Baptist was preaching it, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The Old Testament prophet Ezekiel taught it, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. And of course, Jesus taught it over and over again. He said things like, But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he said, They that are whole have no need of a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This brings up a good point. Listen, there is a difference between a righteous man and an unrighteous man on this earth. Don't be fooled. God can clearly look down on this earth and tell the difference between a man who fears him who strives to live their life in accordance to the Ten Love Commandments, as opposed to one who doesn't. 
And in fact, the Bible confirms many righteous people who lived on earth. Enoch, Noah, Job, Abraham, Zechariah and Elizabeth, Mary. So listen, it's people who hate this biblical doctrine of repentance that try to say, oh, we're all just sinners. We're all alike. No one's better than anyone else. <laughs> well, that's just ridiculous. These people hate the idea that we have to live right to go to heaven. Their pride blinds them to this truth. So don't buy their lies. There absolutely is a difference between people's righteousness. And this is why Jesus said, I didn't come to tell good people to repent, but the bad ones. In fact, on this matter, let me tell you a personal message, a miraculous message I received from God back in 2007, proving he really does want us to stop sinning to make heaven. I was working as a carpenter one day, hanging trim in a room at a retirement center, when all of a sudden God asked me a question. He said, Gabriel, do you know why people don't stop sinning? I was trying to think of an answer when he said, it's because they do not fear me. He said, take for example the sin of premarital sex. If I had you ignite a massive bonfire and then you told the people when they're caught fornicating, they will be held for 15 minutes with their feet five inches from the flames. How much premarital sex do you think there'd be? And tell them I'll point them out. In other words, there'll be no hiding from their sin. So as everyone watches the first person caught getting punished, their face screaming and writhing in pain, ah! as their feet slowly burn deeper and deeper, how much fornication do you think would continue among the people? Oh my, I said, probably none, God. They'd be scared to death to fornicate. But God, I said, this is too harsh. If I told people this, they just say back to me, God is love. You're a fear monger. Man, guys, he fumed back at me. I am love. I'm trying to save my children's souls, but they will not stop sinning willfully. And it's only because they do not fear me. They have no concept or reality of the horrifying fires of hell. And yet this is exactly where they're going if they don't stop willfully sinning against me. Wow, guys. This message wouldn't leave my head all day at work. I couldn't get over what God had told me. I mean, I knew he was right. If people feared the punishment of hell to that extreme, they do right, but they don't. And God told me, this is the fear of me that is missing in people's hearts today, Gabriel. This is the kind of fear and trembling that could and would work out my children's salvation. It would lead them to eternal life, but they do not possess it. Well, I got home from work that day, and almost immediately the phone rang. It was my next door neighbor's daughter, Labrina. Now she didn't live there anymore. She lived about two miles away, and she was just calling to chat. And since she's a good Christian girl, I told her what God had told me that day. Because to be honest, that's all I could think about. As you can imagine, she didn't have much to say after that. So we hung up the phone, and I went to take a nap. Well, within the hour, my phone was ringing again, and it was Labrina again. It turns out she had driven over to her parents' house, right next door to me, 
and she was excitedly saying, Open up your front door. Open it up and look outside. Well, are you ready for this? Labrina is my witness. There was a car right across the street from my house, completely engulfed in flames. I'm not talking just the hood area. I mean the entire car. The flames were leaping 30 feet into the air. I just sat there, folks, in shock and in horror because I realized God was confirming everything he had told me that day at work. Listen to me, people. God is serious. He really wants you to stop sinning so you make heaven. You must repent or turn from your sins. You must willfully choose to live your life in obedience to God's Ten Love Commandments. If you'll do that, you will receive forgiveness for the sins you did commit through Christ's death on the cross. And Jesus told us, There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Glory to God! And Peter left us know, The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Man, he's calling you, friends. If you're still living in willful sin, God is actively working to lead you to repentance. He loves you. He doesn't want you to go to hell. So even if he has to put you flat on your back someday to get you to the point where you realize what life is about, don't despise his chastening. He's trying to save your soul. And this is why Paul said, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation, leaving no regret. Well, now you know what the Bible means by the phrase, repentance for forgiveness of sins. And now you know that phrase, is just the salvation equation. Well, we still got a lot to talk about, friends. So we're going to pick this up next time with the question of all questions. Good teacher, what must I do to obtain eternal life? So we'll see you then. Visit 10lovecommandments.com to get your copy of the beautiful 10 Love Commandments poster. This poster is a biblical masterpiece and a must-have for every household and church. Learn how the two great commandments, to love God with all your heart, and to love your neighbor as yourself, are a summary of the Ten Love Commandments. Learn how all sin is based on disobedience to the Ten Love Commandments, and all love is based on obedience to them. For example, learn where hatred and forgiveness fit into the Ten Love Commandments. Learn the powerful salvation equation, which clearly explains God's duty, and your duty, in obtaining eternal life for your soul. Learn how all of Jesus' teachings, when instructing us on how to live to obtain eternal life, every parable, story, and direct teaching, are based on the Ten Love Commandments. Learn dozens of biblical phrases that mean to keep the Ten Love Commandments, like, be sober and vigilant, the patience of the saints, and, to know God. Learn how your two hands containing ten fingers, and your two feet containing ten toes, are your own personal copies of the two stone tables God inscribed with the Ten Love Commandments. Get your poster today, hang it on your wall, and let it encourage you daily to always do those things that are pleasing in God's sight. The Works of Love One night back in 2011, while the Ten Love Commandments logo was being designed, Gabriel had a vision of the two M's in the word Commandments, changing into the two stone tablets. And the rest is history. The Ten Love Commandments logo was born. 
Today, 10 Love Commandments Ministries is passionate about everyone in the world knowing the full truth behind God's 10 Commandments, how all of Jesus' teachings were based on them, how all of our thoughts, words, and deeds are governed by them, and how they have all been known by mankind since Adam and Eve sinned. Our goal is to make the divinely inspired 10 Love Commandments logo known throughout the world in an effort to lead the world to the truth of God's Ten Commandments. For this cause, we have printed the logo on posters, t-shirts, and bumper stickers, with keychains coming soon. And we have plans for hats, beanies, vanity plates, window decals, mouse pads, and more. Unfortunately, to make these items inexpensive for people to purchase, we have to order hundreds of each item to get a reduced per item price. Therefore, there is a substantial upfront cost. So we need your support. If the Lord leads you to help in this mission, we would deeply appreciate it. Please use the PayPal Donate button on our website, which securely accepts credit cards, or send check or money order to 10 Love Commandments Ministries, P.O. Box 814, Hermitage, Tennessee, 37076. Thanks for your help.